Okay, here we are in the Azure portal. That's portal.azure.com. And I find it the easiest thing when you're trying to find something or create something in Azure. You just go up to this top search bar here and I could type in machine learning um, and then you're gonna see these different options. So you click on that and it, what this is gonna do is it's gonna show you what you already have and then let you create new resources uh, new solution. So I already have a workspace here from machine learning, but I'm going to create a new one to show you those steps. The resource group, that's just a very uh, a logical grouping of things in Azure. So we're just going to put it in our bot uh, resource group. Uh, we're going to give it a name. I'll just call it Kirby Demo. This is going to have to be unique. So you get the little green check mark when everything looks good. Let's pick West US 2. And what I would let this do for you is just set up the storage account because then it's going to integrate it with the security, everything you need. So you can um, just let these defaults uh, be as they are. If you did have an existing storage account, of course, you could pick that here. Um, let's see, it's going to create a new application insights for us, a container registry we don't need right now. Uh, but that can be created later. Let's click the networking. For right now, this is just a test environment, so I'll leave it as a public endpoint. Advanced, let's see if there's anything else we need to do here. Uh, this is not uh, something that needs high business impact, so we won't check that. Because all these defaults look good to me. Tags are just a way to label stuff. You could say something like, you know, department, just make it up yourself. Make a new one, use an existing one, and say, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is going to be legal or something like that. So you can set that up, and you can. This also helps with billing or searching for things. So then it's going to do a validation, make sure everything's okay, and we get the green light. So click create, and then it's off and running. So what I've said in other videos is always keep an eye on this little bell icon up here because you can navigate away from here and do other things. Uh, but if you want to see it, you'll be notified when the resource is ready. But if you somehow dismiss that and want to figure out where that deployment is and its progress or if it's done, just click this little bell icon and it's going to show you what's going on. So let's give that a minute to finish. Okay, it didn't take too long. That was maybe 30, 40, 50 seconds. And you're going to get this notification here. Uh, it's always convenient to pin it to the dashboard. That way you're going to find it earlier. Uh, sorry, down the road when you're looking for things. If you pin it to dashboard, uh, that's, you know, when you hit this and you're kind of at the home page of your Azure portal, it'll be pinned to that. You can have more than one dashboard too. But let's just say go to resource. So now this is uh, the control plane of uh, the machine learning workspace. So there's different things like networking that we looked at before, et cetera. Uh, but typically what you do here is you're going to launch the studio. This is where you get into the user interface of Azure Machine Learning. And that's what we're going to go through there and set up a couple of things. Okay, so this is what it looks like in your machine learning studio. Lots of things to do here. Let's first jump down to the manage section. And this is where we're going to go to the compute section. This is where you spin up VMs to run your uh, machine learning workloads on. Compute instance, that would be a single one. We'll, we're about to set that up. You can also scale with compute clusters. When you're ready to deploy your model, like for an in inference cluster, you can do that here. Then you have your attached computes. That's where you can attach things like Azure Synapse as Spark uh, nodes. But let's start right here with our compute instance. We'll say new. Let's see, we'll give it a name, Kirby's Compute. And we'll pick a four core, uh, 28 gigabyte of RAM here. And we can just click create to kick it off. And that's off to the races. So we'll let that spin up. And we're going to come back to that. Um, data sets, go to data sets. So there is a storage account behind this machine learning workspace. And you can actually get to that, just to show you kind of behind the covers. If you went to your Azure, went to storage accounts, and then I uh, remember when we created this, we called it Kirby Demo, and it had a number after that. Well, if we go to that here and we go to our containers, we'll see this thing called Azure ML Blob Store, blah, 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 blah. 
If you go in here, you can actually upload files and access that through the machine learning workspace. So that, that's under the covers, just like a very typical storage account data lake in Azure. But a much simpler way to do that is in here in the machine learning studio under assets, data sets, you could just say create a data set. And let's say uh, we're going to create it from a local file. So we click that and we're going to give it, let's just say taxi. We have some New York taxi uh, demo data sets here. So taxi two, because I think I have one out there. Click next. Now this is where we're going to upload. This is coming to my local computer here. It's not going to a storage account or anything. The reason I point this out is it's just very easy to get started with data without even really having to understand how storage accounts work and how to transfer to storage accounts in the background. So we're just doing that all in the machine learning workspace. Click next. It's going to take a, a little bit to validate that file and it'll, it'll, yeah, you can change these defaults, but it gives you a little preview of, of what the data looks like. It looks like it's kind of figured out what to do. And then you can pick, you know, which, uh, fields you want to import and we'll just leave all those defaults but we could toggle those off and then this profile is pretty slick uh, we don't have our uh, compute instance set up but if you want to profile the data set it's going to uh, do some profiling on each column i'll show you that in a bit but uh, for right now let's just say create and let that create the data set okay there we are there's the taxi 2 data set and let's go down to our, our compute remember we uh, created a compute here's our compute instance it's running, that's all good. Now this is what's slick. If you wanna use our studio, go ahead and do that. You would just click here and then that's gonna spin up the actual R Studio IDE that you're used to using. So this should look very familiar to anybody using R. Here we go. So that is gonna use this IDE, but then use this compute instance VM in the background for all its processing in Azure. But also, you may prefer to use Jupyter Lab. Now, you don't really need to do this because the notebooks built into Azure Machine Learning have all the functionality of Jupyter Lab. But if you wanted to, you just click this up and just click the link that is. Just like our studio, it's going to now bring up the Jupyter Lab environment. But let's go back here. So that's our compute. Now, if we go back to that data set, we can profile it because we have. Um, we have a compute instance to do that with. So I'm in that data set, that taxi data set that we manually uploaded. Here's a little information about that. Let's say generate profile. It's gonna ask us um, what to use, what compute to use for that profiling, and I'll click generate. And now that's gonna queue that uh, for profiling, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've been notified by this little bell icon here. It's all green that the profiling of my data is complete. So let's check it out. We don't need to actually see the run date, uh, details. We want to look at the data set, it set itself. So let's go back to Taxi 2. Here we are and click the Explore. And it's going to preview the data set for you. Here's the data set. But if you click the Profile tab, now this is where we're going to see the statistics of the data set. And let's go down to something like uh, fair amount. If you click that, then you're going to you know, see a little uh, box and whisker chart here. You're going to see your quantiles, your quartile one, two, three, et cetera. All these different uh, you know, things like mean, standard deviation, all these things that um, um, can help you in your data analysis. Okay, so we've so far created our machine learning studio. We've created a compute instance to run jobs against. We've imported data sets. Uh, we've run data profiling on them. Now let's go ahead and look at notebooks. We'll click over here and this is empty and probably a good place to start might be the samples folder. Just don't miss this up here next to files is samples. And let's open up the how to use Azure ML. Let's go to deployment because it's kind of slick to see how things are actually just deployed uh, out to like a, uh, a an instance, a container instance. Let me just bring this out. Here's a model, register and deploy. You click on it, you can preview the data set. It's gonna explain what this will do. You can kind of scroll down and see the different cells of the notebook and what's happening here. They end up uh, importing a model. 
uh, from a pickle file uh, down here and deploying it out to an Azure container instance. So we'll go ahead and just say clone this notebook. And when that happens, it'll probably give you a little note saying that it'll grab the YAML file too. So click clone. Now you're going to get your own copy of this notebook. And that's a good way to get started with notebooks. Okay, this should look pretty familiar to you if you're used to using Jupyter Labs. Let's shrink this up here, hit the little chevrons here to give ourselves some more space. Here's our cells. Of course, you can add new code cells or markdown just for documentation. And this little uh, menu up here, if we click that, you can see that uh, you have your editors option. You can edit this notebook in Jupyter Lab, Jupyter, uh, VS Code. Uh, but like I said earlier, all the features of Jupyter Lab are built in here, so that might not be necessary. Uh, you've got these different kernel operations you can do, different cell operations, uh, insert and, and running, etc. Uh, this is your compute instance that you're picking to run this against. Um, the version of Python, let's click that, see you know other versions that are available. So this is the notebook experience and uh, you just go in here and then just start running your cells and checking the output, et cetera. Uh, here, there you can see I ran a cell. Uh, you could run all if you want, of course, but uh, this is a cell by cell a notebook that you can run to do your machine learning uh, experiments with. Another thing I wanted to show you was the automated ML. Now there's a really good tutorial that'll walk you through that. If you click on this uh, link here, tutorial, create your first classification model, It'll bring you out to this web page and it'll uh, give you a bank marketing uh, .csv file here. And then it'll walk you through the entire process. You've already set up the machine learning workspace, so you don't need to worry about that. But here, it'll walk you through um, uploading that file, picking the columns that you want, configuring the run of, of your auto machine learning exper experiment. You'll set up a, a cluster for that. And then it'll run through and it's going to, you're going to pick a column, uh, column Y that you're trying to predict. Um, I think it's like, you know, the um, chances of the person in this bank uh, opening up a certificate of deposit or something like that, it's estimating. But what auto ML will do is it'll run through a, a bunch of different algorithms and help you pick the best model so that you can deploy that and run with that. So that is the auto ML portion. And the last little peek preview here I'm going to show you is the designer. Uh, so you've got your automated automated ML. That's kind of the uh, crawl analogy using a crawl walk run analogy. Automated ML. The the walking is the designer. This is a visual designer. Uh, let's just keep going with that analogy. And then the run would be you know things like Python and, and notebooks etc. So kind of the crawl walk run, if you may. Now here we are in our designer. You can start from scratch or let's pick this one. Here's a regression experiment uh, predicting the price of an automobile. And when you click that, it's going to put out these different um, modules. You can, of course, change it. You just go over here and pick your different sample data sets. You pick your data transformations, et cetera. But this will give you a good idea of, of kind of a typical uh, experiment here. Over here, you're going to pick your compute instance. Uh, there we go. And we have one already. So that uh, little red message will go away. So now we're off uh, and actually looking at the experiment itself. Here's where you can change your columns that you've predict predicted. You can clean some data. You can split it. And then, of course, uh, train, score, and evaluate your model. So that's uh, the visual designer of uh, machine learning. So really quick high-level overview of what you can do in Azure Machine Learning Studio. That, of course, just scratched the surface. But what I really want to drive home is these notebooks and being, you know, uh, for advanced data scientists that want to just pick with their language of choice and use things like RStudio or Jupyter Labs, you can do that. Uh, using Machine Learning Studio, or if you're just getting started with machine learning, then you might want to try out the automated ML or the designer. Hope that helps.